FPL is finally back this week, which means it's time for Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid. Welcome to FPL, mate. My name is Dan, and with the Premier League kicking back up in a couple of days, it's time to refocus on our transfer moves for Game Week 8. Just to let you guys know, the latest episode of the Stick to FPL podcast is now up for Game Week 8. And this week, we focus on when is the right time to buy Cole Palmer. We look at Haaland and whether his blanks should be affecting our mentality. And also looking at those midfielders to buy. Check it out. It's very, very humorous as always. I think you guys are really enjoying it so far. So if you haven't checked it out, go and do YouTube, uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to consume your podcast, it is there for you. Just search Stick to FPL or use the link at the top of the the description but you guys are here for buy sell keep avoid so that's exactly what we're gonna do and as always guys this video is split into two sections the first section we are going to have a look at all of those players who you might already have in your team and figure out which of these players that you have currently you should be keeping and which ones you should be selling after that we'll look through the same positions and figure out which players we should be buying to replace them and which ones we should be avoiding as well so remember guys this section is all about those players you already own. So let's get started with those forwards. We can see here at the top, Haaland is a definite keep. I know a lot of people are selling him. That's going to sound crazy to a lot of you people, but for some people, you know, Haaland, two game weeks of blanks is not good enough and you want a hat trick every single game week from him. Unfortunately, that is just not likely to happen, but we have got two really nice fixtures coming up from him. Uh, Wolves away and Southampton at home. Obviously, Wolves conceding the most goals of any Premier League team right now and we know that Southampton are a pretty weak team in the Premier League as well, possibly even the weakest. So, therefore, the player who is putting up the best numbers in the entire Premier League, and that's not just real life goals, it's also the underlying stats as well. Everything is pointing towards some huge hauls from our guy Harlan. So don't give up on him yet. You might just regret it. Havertz is another keep here for the Bournemouth game. He's been in good form recently and I think some people are selling him because he's flagged in FPL. Now I'm not going to include a flag on him in this video because I know he's fine because we've seen reports now that Havertz, he hasn't picked up a new injury or anything like that. It's just a, a kind of an aggravation of a very, very old injury and and therefore, he's just given been given the international break off as a couple of weeks to just rest and recover and get ready for this Bournemouth game. So I have no doubts that he will be starting against Bournemouth. And I think he is worth keeping for at least another game week. We've also got Watkins as a keep here as well. Uh, I'm not really sure why people are selling Watkins, but uh, some people seem to be. I think next couple of game weeks, you can definitely afford to keep him unless there's someone else you really want. Can't really think who I would sell Watkins for though, really. Very, very decent player, decent data, scoring goals, getting assists, everything you want from an FPL asset, really. Uh, next up, we've got the monitor section. So we're going to include players like Vardy and Calvert-Lewin in here. So these are players that are probably don't buy, don't sell. I wouldn't necessarily be buying these players, but if you have them currently, they're probably worth keeping because they play Southampton and Ipswich, respectively. So just for this game week, I think you've got to give them another chance, even though maybe they've been slightly disappointing in recent game weeks still think they are worth keeping in your teams. Um, Vardy in particular, I would definitely consider selling it in game week nine. But again, with both Vardy and Calvert-Lewin, in game week 10, they have good fixtures again. The inverse of each other's fixtures from game week eight. So yeah, it's an interesting one. I don't think they're worth selling though. I wouldn't buy them either though. I think there's better options, which we will cover later in the video. Players like Danny Welbeck, don't think you really sell him at this point. Someone to monitor as we get towards these more difficult fixtures in 10 and 11 though and Jackson just doesn't make sense to buy him ahead of Liverpool away Liverpool have been the best defense in the Premier League so far this season so uh if you can have a little bit more patience maybe wait one more game week before buying Jackson I think that's probably the way I would go there uh even wait till game week 12 before buying Jackson I think that's a, a the, probably the best jumping on point I can see for a player like him right now I think there's just better options to go for uh so maybe consider selling uh, Jackson if you already have him Certainly not a buy, uh, but you could maybe hold him. Kind of up to you. Uh, for sells, we've got to sell players here. Duran just is not a starting player. I, I know people picked him up because, you know, they were seeing him get goals from the bench. 
it was never likely to continue that he'd be able to score one goal from the bench every single game. Uh, you know, without a significant amount of minutes, it is tougher for players to score goals. So therefore, he is a player I would look to remove right now. Uh, so straight up sell, replace him with another guy. Uh, Isaac. There is potential for him to be back in game week eight, but at the same time, I don't think I'd want to keep him regardless. So if you still somehow have Isaac, even though he could be back, the bad fix just after that for Newcastle suggests to me he's probably a guy to just get rid of. And João Pedro, he has now supposedly rumoured that he will be out for many, many weeks. We're looking at six or more weeks before João Pedro is back. So yeah, now that we know it's not a short-term thing for him anymore, it's probably a good idea to just get rid of him and, you know, find someone else for your team for now. There's quite a lot of options at the moment at around 5.5 to 6 million at the moment. So you're in a good position. If you do have João Pedro, yes, you do have to sell him, but there's options for you, which we will cover shortly. But first of all, we need to go through some of the other positions for players you might want to sell. So our midfielder keeps are going to be Smithrow, Salah and Palmer. Now, Smithrow, uh, I appreciate he was benched in the last game. But given that small rest, I think he is going to be uh, very ready to go coming in to game week eight after the international break. And we've got a nice run of fixtures for him here. I do think Smithrow's uh, benching in game week seven was tactical. And moving forward, I expect him to play in in every one of these fixtures, uh, providing he is fit. Right now, he is fit. Obviously, he's done very well so far this season, so I just would not be panicking on that Game Week 7 situation too much. He's definitely a solid player at that 5.7 million price tag, and you'll struggle to get a player really too much better than him at the moment. You know, you may be look, you're maybe looking at McNeil, I guess it's the only player around the Smith Rowe price that you might replace him with. Is that really an improvement to your team? I'm not sure it is. So let's, uh, let's keep Smith Rowe. I definitely like this pick. Home game against Villa, not too bad. Salah, worth keeping against Chelsea. Uh, it's not an amazing fixture, but when we look at some of the other options that you would be selling Salah for, i.e. Palmer, I'm just not really sure it's worth it. You know, Palmer against Liverpool, Salah against Chelsea. He's probably more likely that Salah performs in this fixture than Palmer because Salah has the more favourable matchup there, I guess. Um, but yeah, certainly these kind of players, they just don't buy, don't sell. Whoever you've got, you stick with. If you've got a Salah, stick with him. If you've got a Palmer, stick with him. And that's why they're both in the keep section. And then we've got other players like Saka and Son who are kind of keeps if they're available. So Saka... It looks likely that he is going to be available, but we don't know that for sure yet. We're going to keep an eye on that throughout the week. If he is available, then he's a keep. If he is unavailable, then he's a sell. If we don't know, we don't get any definitive information. I still think he could potentially be a keep. If you've got someone like Rogers on your bench who can cover in a worst case scenario, it might be worth holding on to Saka, actually. So yeah, once a monitor throughout the week. Similar situation with Son, who actually could be back this week. And if he's back against West West Ham. That could actually be quite nice for, for him. And he, you know, he could be a little decent differential for you if you do still have Son in your team. As for someone like Luis Diaz, again, another player to monitor. I don't think he's an automatic sell necessarily. Uh, obviously, he's done very well so far this season. Maybe last couple of game weeks, disappointed a little bit for owners. But at the same time, He's probably first choice in that left wing position. Uh, he has got time to recover post international break. And I expect him to have a good chance of playing against Chelsea. It's not guaranteed, of course. We know with these Liverpool attackers, there is going to be a little bit of rotation risk for anyone. But uh, I think, you know, I don't think he is a priority sell. You can afford to keep him, but maybe someone to monitor. Let's see how you feel. This monitor category, you know, we said this before. It's really about... Do you have a strong opinion? You know, these players could go either way, depending on various situations. You know, if you feel strongly that you want to keep Luis Diaz, I think that's fine. If you feel that you want to sell him, I think that's fine as well. He could go either way, unlike players like Smith, Rose, Salah and Palmer, who I would definitely keep. You know, so anyway, we've got Semenyo finally here. He would be a player I would keep if you can bench him and sell if you can't. I think that's probably the best way because... After game week 11, Semenyo is actually a player I would quite like to have in my FPL team. So if you can afford to bench him for maybe game week 8 against Arsenal, game week 10 against Man City, then he's probably worth keeping, holding on to in your team. But if you have a big problem and you don't have any other options on your bench, 
I can understand why you would sell him there. But still, as always, Semenyo, absolute shots monster. Like me, back in my university days. Shots, shots, shots. That's all he does. Anyway, we need to do some sells. Eza, sell. Nottingham Forest away. Bad fixture. Very, very bad fixture. Even though, as always, Eze's data is pretty good. It's not like elite. It's not elite enough that we would back him despite the fact that he's not returning. So I, I do think given the next two fixtures, Forrest uh, and Spurs there, Fulham in 11. I don't think that's a great fixture for an attacker either. I would definitely be thinking about selling Eza if you do still have him. We've got Madueke in here as well, Liverpool away. I just don't think Madueke is, uh, he's not like a Palmer where you're happy to hold him even in the slightly tougher fixtures uh, because we have so much faith in Palmer. I don't have that same faith in Madueke. And I think at 6.5 million, he's not a player I would be as willing to just bench for a few weeks compared to someone like Semenyo. Because when we're talking about 6.5 million players, you know, there's, there's some decent players you can get for that amount of money. So it might be worth selling for now, even if you want to buy him back in like game week 12, for example. I think that would work fine. Onana is obviously going to be a sell. He was never a buy to begin with. I have no idea why people bought him in. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's not even hindsight, guys. He was he was firmly in the avoid category back when people were buying him. But uh, yeah, you, you know, sometimes people make mistakes with buying players. I've certainly done it loads of times before. I'll Definitely do it again. I've made a mistake buying Eza, for example, uh, but I decided to correct that and sell him. And I think probably the same thing I would do with Onana. And there's, there's a potential injury there as well, which is uh, the cherry on, on the top of that. Uh, quite brutal. But yeah, Onana, a player to sell. Hopefully you can find someone around 5, 5.5 to replace him with. Defenders to keep. Gvardiol. Yes, got to keep him. I'm looking through the Man City fixtures over the next three, four game weeks, and I don't think anyone has better fixtures, particularly from a defensive point of view. So I would be very keen to keep those Man City defenders. Gvardiol, Lewis, if you have them, you probably keep them for this run of fixtures. Even though Man City have been a little disappointing in the clean sheet department, I think they have been quite unfortunate and their data is suggesting that they are due a clean sheet or two. And looking through these next fixtures, I think it's a good there's some good opportunities here uh, to finally get some more clean sheets since game week one because it's been that long. It really has. A little bit of attacking threat for Gavardio as well, which is pretty nice. So definitely a player to keep for me, as is Pedro Porro. Decent fixtures coming up and Spurs have improved defensively defensively so far this season as well maybe with the exception of game week seven against Brighton where mistakes were made but I would still be looking to keep Pedro Porro. Gabriel is another player I would keep certainly for this Bournemouth fixture it's a nice it's a nice fixture for a defender I think it's tougher for an attacker um, Bournemouth don't score too many goals but they don't let in too many goals either so there's definitely clean sheet potential here and when you look at Gabriel's uh, XG here for example 1.23 really really high that's the highest of any defender so far this season of course we are only looking here at the last six game weeks because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep this uh, fairly current so we're just looking at the last six game weeks data so we have up-to-date data and we're kind of uh, phasing out old data in a way but we, we, we have got clear evidence that Gabriel is, is probably the best goal scoring defender in the league right now uh maybe Trent Alexander-Arnold has something to say about that but the data doesn't back him up because Trent is on 0.28 xg and the reason why uh Trent is in the monitor section but, but despite the fact that he has amazing attacking data it's these next two, I was I would say two fixtures but really Liverpool because they've had such easy fixtures so far this season they've got quite a long run now of for a couple of months where there's quite a lot of difficult fixtures in there and there's no clear run of good fixtures. So, although I do like Trent and if you can keep him, I probably would, I understand that if you need to free up some budget, perhaps, to upgrade someone else in your team, maybe Trent could be a make-weight a player to sell to free up the cash to make another transfer. I would understand that. I would understand that. So that's why he's in the monitor. Uh, Saliba, zero attacking threat. So you are really dependent on clean sheets. And yeah, even though Bournemouth is not too bad, we've got Liverpool, Newcastle, Chelsea after that. So not massively keen on Saliba as a pick generally speaking. Um, but, you know, you could keep him for this Bournemouth game at least. Uh, Robinson, 
a one to monitor, I suppose. I don't think there's too much wrong with Fulham's defence at the moment, even though they, they're they not keeping clean sheets every week. I mean, who is really? And Robertson, another player, could be used as a make weight. Still pretty decent uh, attacking data here. 0.37 XG, 0.93 XA. Really unlucky not to get an assist uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. But uh, regardless, the next two fixes are really tough. There's no good fixtures in the in the kind of medium to long term again another player who could maybe be a make weight but also you could keep him ben white is probably a sell too expensive a little bit of uh injury risk at the moment for him and the bad fixtures after game week eight if he's out for game week eight it probably means you should probably just sell him now. Um, but again, we'll see his exact injury situation, but not super keen on this one. And now Arsenal have more options to play at the fullback positions. I do worry about Ben White a little bit as an FPL pick. So a potential sell there. Masrawi, another potential injury. And, you know, I, I, I just look at this Brentford game and I think Brentford is just scoring goals for fun at the moment. Brian and Burmo, is he going to cook uh, against Man United? It's an interesting one, uh, but I think I would be very tempted to sell Masrawi. And Konsa, I've not listed him as a definite out, but it is incredibly likely that he's going to be out for game week eight. And therefore, he's maybe a player to replace if you don't have any backup options. And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying the video, make sure you do drop a like. It really does help out the channel so much. And do subscribe if you're new around here as well. But we need to move on to the second section of the video. So let's talk about buys. We know who we're selling. We know who we're keeping. But who are we going to replace these cells with? And in the forward position, Haaland, I think for the next two game weeks, is the best captain option. For game week eight, he seems to be the best captain option by a long shot, considering Salah and Palmer play against each other, and Saka is potentially injured, and that Bournemouth fixture is not amazing, and Harlan plays against Wolves. So I'd be very worried going into the next two game weeks without Harlan because of that captain option that he is. So he is in the buy section. Delap, I think, provides a really nice, cheap forward uh, option for you guys. Nice fixtures, good form, on penalties most likely, and uh, Everton, Brentford, Leicester in the next three. There's going to be more goals for him here, and he's going to be coming into these games with a lot of confidence. Now, he is over overperforming his numbers quite a lot, but I still think there is enough there to suggest that going forward, we could get some more from him, particularly at that super cheap price tag. We've got to put that into perspective, guys. And Solanke, if you're looking for that mid-priced forward to go for right now, look no further. West Ham concede so many goals in central areas to strikers. West Ham just seem to be a striker's dream uh, kind of fixture at the moment. So Spurs have this home fixture. We know Solanke has some really nice data. Three Over 3 XG in four games that he's played in the last six game weeks. That's really, really high. It's really genuinely very high. It's kind of, well, it's not quite Haaland levels, but it's getting close, right? You're not going to see too many other players with XG data like that, particularly considering he's played less games than some of his uh, other forward compatriots, I suppose. Wood is definitely still a player to consider. He's almost a buy. Uh, maybe the fact that he's 6.2 and some of these other, you know, like Delaps are a little cheaper. Maybe that affects things a little bit. The next fixtures are, are pretty good for him though. So definitely a player to still consider even now. Raul Jimenez, unfortunately, we have got the news that he's not going to be on penalties moving forward. And Aston Villa isn't the perfect fixture. So that's why I'm kind of leading Delap over Raul at the moment. So again, maybe that's kind of up to you. That's why he's in monitor. You might feel strongly that Raul Jimenez is the better pick, but I am going to put him in this section here. Data, pretty good, but remember one of those, uh, well, what part of this data was a penalty, so that is going to impact things a little bit. Watkins one to monitor. I don't know if he's a buy necessarily. Like we mentioned earlier, if you already have him, you probably keep him, but not sure if I buy him or not. Same with Havertz. You probably keep him, but looking at these fixtures in general, would I be desperate to buy him right now? Most likely not. So, one to monitor, but I'm not sure if I would buy him. And avoids. We'll put Welbeck in here, I think. Maybe I'm just... I don't know. Am I being harsh on Welbeck? I just... Look, I'm just really worried about that Liverpool and Man City back-to-back. -back. Can he do enough against Newcastle away? And then Wolves. Wolves at home is obviously a good fixture, but Newcastle away is not great. Uh, and Liverpool and Man City are just 
bad fixtures generally. So I don't think I would be buying Welbeck given this next run of four. This is not the time to buy him. If you already have him, yeah, fine to keep, but don't think I'd buy him. Antonio, don't think we need to spend too much time on this one. Maybe a bit of a knee-jerk transfer for a lot of people given his big returns in game week seven. But next few fixtures, pretty tough for West Ham. So not sure I would go there. And of course, Jackson, we mentioned earlier, uh, he wouldn't be a player to buy this week because of that tough fixture against Liverpool. A little bit of patience before you go in on him. If you already have him, you maybe keep him depending on your situation. Midfielders to buy, Mbermo, top of the list, no doubt about that, in just such good form at the moment, really nice data, 15 shots, six in the, uh, six big chances, 2.74 XG in the last six, penalty taker, uh, set piece taker, he's got incredible expected assists numbers and creativity numbers, but unfortunately just hasn't been able to get any assists, which is really quite tough because uh, he has been creating so much for his teammates. So maybe if his teammates can be as clinical as he has been, then uh, we're going to get some assist points to add to the goal points that he is, seems to be getting every single game week. And there's good fixtures on the horizon here as well. I, I like the Spurs midfielders here as well. I know people will ask about Kulisevsky, but for me, Johnson and Madison are better enough than Kulisevsky that I wouldn't really consider Kulisevsky unless you are just so tight for cash. But Johnson would be my second priority buy for this game week alongside Madison. Really, really good numbers, really good data, good attacking form for Spurs and great fixtures. Love this West Ham one. We've got Ipswich in 11 as well. Love it. For monitors, McNeil, maybe almost a buy. Uh, Ipswich up next for him. He's creating so much, but I wouldn't expect too many goals from him um, moving forward. Maybe a bit, a bit, uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know if it's sustainable, his goal scoring, but his uh, creativity definitely is. So still worth considering. Foden's on here if you are feeling super risky because we have seen nothing from Foden so far this season in terms of an FPL asset that we'd like to go for. But the fixtures are really good. We know the quality Foden has. If you want to go risky, Foden is your guy. Monitor Saka, because of that potential injury. Palmer, another player to monitor. The only way I can see myself buying Palmer this week is if Saka injury was confirmed and you just wanted to pick Palmer up now for the long term. And Rogers, I think you avoid him this week. I, I don't think there's a strong need to buy someone like Rogers this week for Fulham away. Uh, the fixtures aren't really good enough to justify buying him. If you already have him, great. You can definitely afford to play him. I'm actually looking at benching him this week, to be fair. Um, but he is a potential player you can start if you have him. But whoever you've got right now is probably just as good as Rogers uh, at around that price tag. And then we've got Luis Diaz. Again, we said about not selling him necessarily, but I don't think I'd buy him this week. And Kovacic, a very easy avoid. Uh, you know, again, kind of like Onana, it's a defensive midfielder that popped up with a couple of goals that doesn't necessarily uh, lead me to believe that is going to continue. Um, certainly looking at this data, this is not great attacking data. 0.53 XG in uh, six games. It's not good enough for an FPL asset. At 5.5, there are some good other options. Uh, you know, the likes of Smith Rowe and Semenyo and McNeil and even Rogers. to be fair. They're, they're all much better options around this price tag. So I would not be looking to go for Kovacic. Despite the good fixtures, he's just not that guy. Unfortunately, defensive-minded midfielder, particularly with Rodri's injury, he has been given those defensive um, responsibilities. So let's move on. Defenders to buy are, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't love defensive transfers this week. I think all defenders are kind of, in a way, letting us down in various ways. And uh, therefore, I don't think it's necessarily worth spending a transfer on a defender. But if I was to buy defenders, it would probably be a Man City one. So we'll put these guys top of the list with their great fixtures. I've also put Van der Ven in here as well. Uh, like the fixtures, I think Spurs are an improving defence. They have tweaked the system a little bit, which is good to see. And Van der Ven nice and cheap there as well with a small amount of attacking potential. So I don't expect too much from him. Certainly don't expect him to continue his kind of two assists. Uh, well, an assist every few games. I can't see that happening. But still, uh, a little bit of uh, data there. Anyway, monitor players like Gabriel, Trent, if you kind of want to go for them, fair enough. But I don't think you need to go for them right now, given the fixtures. Fixtures pretty important when we're looking at defenders. Justin has the fixtures, but Leicester are sitting with the 
third worst defensive data in the league so far. So if we look at the non-penalty expected goals against, for example, it's uh, kind of 0.1 different from Southampton. And I guess you guys probably wouldn't buy a Southampton defender. So therefore, would you buy a Leicester defender? Probably not, right? Um, also, Justin, yes, he's got a few attacking contributions recently, but you can see two goals and one assist from, what's that, 0.32 expected goal involvements. Super, super low. Um, perhaps a little fortunate there, but uh, good on him. Got Good on him, nonetheless. But uh, I just don't know if it's sustainable, you know, guys. Uh, Dallo maybe one to consider, considering that Man United have... Uh, you know, they've been keeping clean sheets. You can't really doubt that. You might not rate Man United, but they are keeping clean sheets. Uh, and Dallo, I think, is a little bit of a better long-term option than someone like Masraoui. Uh, Dallo should be in the team for the rest of the season. And avoid Fass, 4.2 million, just by Akoli. Uh, it's for 4 million if you'd want a a Leicester defender. Akoli uh, actually does slightly better for bonus points as well. So I think if, you, if you're looking for that, that cheap Leicester defender for a 4 million, Akoli is your guy. No point spending that extra point two. I don't think you gain anything from it. You just, you know, waste money there really on who is essentially going to be a bench option for 90% of game weeks, right guys? Uh, I, Nori, I love as a pick. He's got amazing attacking data, but am I buying him ahead of Man City? No way. Let's talk about Ike Nori next game week because I have a feeling he might be in the buy section. And finally, Kanate. Yes, he's got two attacking returns this season, but as you can see by his data and from his history, he's not usually the goal contributions type. And that's fine uh, if the clean sheets look likely over the next two game weeks, which I'm not sure they do. Uh, we've spoken enough about Liverpool's run of games now, so uh, you can probably understand why I wouldn't be buying Canate this week. But if you do have him already, I think he's fine to keep. I just don't think he's the guy to buy. Whoever you have now is probably good enough that they can do a good job instead of Canate. And since you guys make me do the goalkeeper section, even though I hate doing it because I think goalkeeper transfers are usually pretty pointless unless there's an injury, we will do it because, of course, uh, Alisson has been confirmed injured. He's going to be out for around six weeks or more. So for the goalkeeper keeps, Raya Henderson would be keeping them for game week eight. I would sell Alisson because of his injury. I've put Martinez in here as well. Would I actually sell Martinez if I had him? Probably not, but I think we all agree that he's not provided great value for money, really. In terms of those goalkeeper buys, Raya is in here again. Yeah, if I was to buy a goalkeeper this week, it would probably be Raya if I had to. If you, I don't know, you, you would have to really force me to make a goalkeeper transfer. But if you did, uh, Raya would probably be my pick and I'd just hold him for the long term. Kelleher would also be here as well at, in, as a more of a short-term option if you're looking for a short, quick fix. Good defense, uh, save potential here. Kelleher is probably your guy at 4.4 million. And then we've got the likes of Pickford and Sanchez in the avoid section just because uh, I think people are, are buy these kind of goalkeepers because they got penalty saves, which massively inflated their total points for the season. But players like Pickford, he hasn't returned in six out of seven game weeks. And he got a penalty save. Very nice big score. And I think that kind of twists people's opinion on, on the player a little bit. And we've got Sanchez in here as well. Uh, wouldn't buy him ahead of the Liverpool fixture, basically. I'd wait another week or two or three before buying someone like Sanchez. But there we go, guys. If I had to make goalkeeper suggestions, these would be them. Um, but, you know, don't say I'm not a man of the people because I do listen to feedback and I try and do things for you guys, even if I... Don't agree with them myself. But uh, yeah, if there's any player we missed out of any of the lists this game week, please do let me know in the comments section and we can give them a little rating. Are they a buy, a sell, a keep or avoid? Just leave the player name in the comments and I will reply to you. If you enjoyed this one, please do drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here and don't forget to check out the latest Stick to FPL podcast episode. Link in the description and you can go check that out on whatever audio or video form you prefer. There we go, guys. I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.